Good morning, my fourth grade scientists. I am Scientist Rachel. I am back with my scientist uh, uh, assistants, my little helpers, Buddy, Sunny, and Jack. We are still in Waves Energy and Information. Today, we're going to be in uh, Chapter 3, Lesson 6. We're doing Activities 1, 2, and 4. We're modifying Activity 3. Um, but we're doing one, two, and four for sure in here. You are definitely today gonna need something to write with and something to write on. So please go get that. Uh, you can use your investigation notebook if you have it. If you don't have it, no worries. Just get a pen and paper. Here we go. In the last lesson, we read the scientist who cracked the dolphin code. Um, and again, remember, we're investigating the big unit question, which is how do mother dolphins use different sounds or how do dolphins in general use different sounds to communicate with one another? And then the big one is how do mother dolphins get communicate to their calves, right? So today we're going to use what we have learned about signature dolphin whistles to help us answer this question. So marine scientists study dolphins in the wild um, to learn like, more about them. Obviously, we cannot study dolphins in the classroom or at your house, right? That'd be a little bit weird. Um, but you have so much information already that you know about them to help us answer a couple questions we have. So here is question number one. If a dolphin whistle is high pitched, what would that tell you about the wavelength of the sound wave? Would it be short, like Scientist Sunny says, or would it be long, like Scientist Buddy says? Here we go, drum roll. Let's see who's right. Oh, Scientist Sunny is correct. It is short. So remember, if the whistle is high pitched, the wavelength is going to be short. Um, another question for you. If a whistle, therefore, is low pitched, what would that tell you about the wavelength of the sound wave? So again, Scientist Sunny is saying it is a short sound wave, but Scientist Buddy is saying it's a long sound wave. Here we go. Oh, Scientist Buddy is correct. Guys, if the whistle is low pitched, the wavelength would be long. So remember, those are two key things you need to know. So maybe if you want to write those, want to write that down on your piece of paper, you can stop the video, you can go back um, and write that, that those two pieces of information down. You are definitely going to need them today. I just gave you a big hint. Here we go. So describe what the waveform for um, what each whistle looks like. Use words like long, short, and wavelength. Describe what each whistle sounds like. Use words such as high, low, and pitch. So there's three waveforms right there. I need you to describe every single one of them using those words above, long, short, and wavelength, and then describe what each whistle sounds like, high, low, and pitch. Um, these waveforms represent the signature wh whistles of three different mother dolphins. At this point in the video, you can just stop it and go ahead and do this exercise. Describe the three waveforms. All right, so we keep asking this question. How can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with one another? This is the big question that we have been discussing all unit long. So I need you, again, to if you're done with the other um, three waveforms and you describe them for me, then you can go ahead and keep on. If you haven't, please stop because um, you're going to need that information to answer the rest of these questions. If you have your investigation notebook, please open it to page 72. If you don't, not a big deal. You already have a pen and paper out with you. So. Uh, I want you to think silently and then write your ideas for each question. Remember, you need to provide evidence to support your ideas. Scientists, y'all have a lot of information. You have your sims, you have text evidence. We read different books in this unit already. Um, so you have, you definitely have evidence. Draw on that evidence, pull on it, um, and remember to provide evidence for all of the questions I'm just about to ask you. Here we go. Question number one, how does a mother dolphin's call get to her calf? Hmm, how does a mother dolphin's call get to her calf? What evidence supports your ideas? So remember, you need to cite evidence 
in this question. This is a point in the video where you can just pause it and then when you're done, you can continue. This We're almost done with this lesson. We just have one more question. Here we go. Question number two. How does a dolphin calf know which call is his mother's call? How does a dolphin calf know which call is his mother's call? And again, what evidence supports your ideas? So there are many dolphins out in the ocean, but how does a baby calf know which one is his mama's and not like his aunties or his grandma's or someone that lives with them in the pod? How does he know which one is his? So this is gonna be the end of our lesson. In our next lesson, we are gonna write our final explanations for our, our park superintendent who asked us the big question like how do dolphins, does a mother dolphin communicate with her calf underwater? Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm a scientist Rachel and scientist anybody and Jack, and we will see you tomorrow.